you know, and we talk about things like DeFi and some of the sort of technological, um, I'll say revolution or advancement we've seen in that space and its ability to democratize things like lending or borrowing. Um, it's it's really interesting and, and it maybe speaks to, this is a, a good transition to, to what we're about to talk about, but um, sort of the, the disruptive nature of some of these assets that are being created like Bitcoin and Ethereum and these other um, altcoin platforms. Um, it's really uh, part of a disruptive technology landscape that I think is imperative for advisors to understand, uh, certainly because it's really talking about sort of this, um, you know, technology shift that most of us can remember. Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of advisors that were, you know, are at least around through the, you know, technology web 1.0 revolution in the 90s. Um, so it's something that's very relatable when we talk about um, sort of this shift in um, what we've seen in the past, but, you know, sort of the old order things like um, old cell phones or borders. And then you see things like Amazon come along and, um, you know, what, what looked like, oh, wow, they're going to sell books online turned into uh, the reality is they turned into the everything store that delivers things directly to your door. And nobody really could have anticipated how, um, you know, transformative that, uh, you know, that, that technology was going to be, you know, Apple, the same thing, they were a computer company, but when they put a phone in your pocket with the internet everywhere, it spawned all of these new uh, technologies like, you know, how we consume media or how we use transportation or connect with other people or send payments. So uh, I think it's a really, um, good conversation to be having in terms of, you know, you may not understand every protocol out there and every, you know, DeFi innovation that's there, but if you can understand the transition from things like, you know, why Bitcoin is a, uh, an alternative to gold or, um, you know, why, you know, NFTs are going to be an alternative to art, uh, it at least can frame a little bit and put some context around why there's so much opportunity in this space. I, I wonder if um, if this is something that you guys talk about, Adam. Um, uh, oh, we, we talk about it all, all the time. You, you know, yeah. remember in, in the financial services industry, you have a whole bunch of people who are, I don't know, actively rooting against Bitcoin and crypto mm -hmm. or saying we don't need it or, or all the, the objections. It has nothing backing it um, in terms of Bitcoin or, or when you mm -hmm. talk about ETH, you, they, you hear things like it's relatively slow or it's relatively expensive or we don't understand it or there's a lot of security risks or, or, or what have you. Um, these are a lot of the same issues we had with the with the beginning of the Internet. And, and, you know, I can say that I'm, I guess, one of the relatively older people <laughs> in crypto because I was in college before Amazon even started. Um, and I remember the very beginnings of the Internet. I downloaded the first version of Netscape's browser strictly so that I could look up fantasy football scores <laughs> in, in a relatively fast amount of time. And I didn't have to wait for the newspaper the next day. And you yeah. don't understand how revolutionary that was at the time that I could yeah. I could know whether I won my fantasy football game that evening. That was a big deal. Um, and and I remember when. Look, a dude in, in Seattle started selling books online and he said, I have every single book. And if you put in your credit card number to this weird web thing that you probably don't know how to use, if you put in your credit card, I will get you the book you want within a week and a half. And that was crazy talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have, a, I, I mean, I had family members who said, I will never use anything.com. I don't trust it. And here yeah. we are today. And I can order a car to come pick me up from where I am and take me to where I want to go and never have to take out my wallet. And I can watch a movie that just got released or a whole series that just got released straight from you know, from my home, I can choose any movie probably ever I want in the world, and it, yeah. and, it and I can watch it within moments. That that's crazy to think that that all started because people started putting a credit card number in uh, online, and yeah. it got us. And no one thought Jeff Bezos didn't even think that we were going to be here, you know. And Amazon makes money in so many other ways that we didn't think about. And so think about, you know, try to, as an advisor, kind of think outside and go, OK, knowing what I know about what is is inefficient within the space, what is inefficient in the system that I use, what is inefficient with ownership of assets, because you have pictures in here, of, you know, of the Mona Lisa with a, a crypto punk there. But, mm -hmm. but what that gets to is the, the idea of ownership is going to be a big deal, the idea of custody and how we look at what it means to own something and what it means to control something. And then as, as financial advisors, what what an RIA or what a financial advisor is going to have to understand about how different that that is going to be for investors, for for their typical client or for, you know, for managing money. How different is custody going to be in the near yeah. future? 
what is immediate settlement going to do to to the world of investing and to the world of, of just moving money back and forth you you mentioned payments on here payments are going to be a big deal imagine you're a store and and your payments happen immediately you settle immediately well visa and mastercard are already are already working with that paypal's already yeah. working with that um yeah. they're trying to to get to that point and it makes accounting very different it makes lending very different it, it makes look so much of our infrastructure of the worldwide economy is built on lending money is built right. on using someone else's money and we're going to be able to do that in a more efficient way but you got to start learning about it now you certainly as an advisor want to start learning about it and as an investor you might want to learn about what some of those are what some of those you know projects protocols investments are now before they become the next amazon or netflix or uber right yeah I, I, there's a famous uh jeff bezos quote i think he says uh your your margin is my opportunity and you know it just speaks <laughs> to just speaks to you know where there's inefficiency that's an opportunity for things to be improved and it you know for all of the things we could probably do a, an entire new webinar just on uh, sort of the the technology technology disruptions and payments and finance and settlement. Uh, I think you know IP is a huge one. You know it's not just art, but it's property rights. It's um, you know you could use it in real estate. There's so many different applications um, of what these things can ultimately displace or improve. <laughs>